Hi, a huge welcome to Steve's Kitchen. We have been visiting Sicily and I've had more arancini this week than I've had in my lifetime. They are so delicious. And there are quite a few variations uh, in Sicily alone. I really like the ones that have saffron in the rice, but not everybody's got saffron. The more common ones are the ragu uh, arancini. And uh, this simple recipe is closer to what you might make at home. I'm gonna share it with you today and I hope you'll follow along and give arancini a try. We're gonna start with a very delicious, simple ragu sauce. It's one of the most common arancini in Sicily. So let me show you how to make the sauce. In a pan, I'm gonna put two or three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I've got about a quarter of a cup of finely diced onions. I'm just gonna pop that into the oil and we're just gonna sweat these onions for a minute or so. Then I've got 250 grams, that's about half a pound of beef mince. And I'm gonna cook this beef until it's all browned. I finely diced one small carrot and one stick of celery. It's about half a cup. I'm gonna pop that in there. About a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. Half a teaspoon of salt. You want to use a tomato paste concentrate. I'm using this Mutti brand and I'm gonna add in about three tablespoons. And I'm gonna eyeball about a quarter of a glass of red wine. About a teaspoon of Muscovado sugar. And then to thicken this sauce, because we want a nice creamy sauce, I'm gonna take about a tablespoon, maybe a little under, of flour, all-purpose flour, and just sprinkle it over the top. And about half a cup of water. Now we want this ragu to thicken on our stove top, so I'm gonna cook it for about 20, 25 minutes till we've got a lovely, thick, rich ragu sauce. Now I almost forgot, every single arancino I've had here in Sicily has got peas in, so I've just got about half a cup frozen or fresh peas, and we'll leave that to cook. Whilst our ragu is cooking, we're gonna get on and cook our rice. I can get arancini rice here in Sicily, but uh, you'll be looking for something like an oborio rice if you can't get hold of arancino. In a deep pan, we're gonna add another couple of tablespoons of olive oil. So we're adding to there a cup of finely diced onions. And we're just gonna sweat those down for a minute or so. Now I'm preparing 450 grams of rice here, that's around about a pound. We need to add to this double that by weight of water. So we're using 900 milliliters of water. If this is a pound of rice, we're using about 32 fluid ounces. So my onions have sweated down, I'm gonna add in my water now. I've got a vegetable stock cube, which I'm just going to add in there, just break it up a little bit. Now over here, you'll see the ragu has started to color up beautifully. What I want to do is take maybe four or five tablespoons of the ragu sauce, and we're using that in our water just to add a little extra seasoning and a little extra color. So we just want to bring this liquid up to a boil. As our water starts to boil, I'm just gonna take the rice now, pop it in, give it one stir round, and we want to cook that rice on a gentle heat now for 15 minutes. And once the rice has absorbed all the water, it's ready. Now at the back here, you can see the ragu has thickened up beautifully. It's got a nice rich color. I'm just going to get a little bit of chopped up basil now. I'm actually going to turn the ragu sauce off so it's no longer cooking. Pop my basil in there. I'm going to mix it in and we're going to leave this ragu to cool down on the side. Almost all the water has been absorbed into the rice now. I'm gonna take that off the heat. Now we want to put our rice onto a cold surface to cool down. So I'm just gonna tip this out onto a baking tray and I'm going to spread this rice out across the tray because before we can form this to an arancino, we have to have let it completely cool down. Now we've moved out into the courtyard here. We've had a bit of a rainstorm and the light starting to fade, but everything is now prepared and we're ready to go. Our rice has cooled down. I've just moved it into a bowl. Our ragu is looking fantastic. The last thing we want is some mozzarella cheese, which I've actually just cut up into small cubes. Now we're gonna form our arancino and I'm going for the tapered style. Uh, it's a little tricky, but I'll show you how. It's a good idea to wet your hands. So have a little bowl of water into there. I'm just gonna damp my hands over, not soaking wet over to our cold rice and I'm going to grab myself a handful a fairly decent size handful if you were doing the round arancini that's the shape you'd be going for now compact it together and then I'm going to push my thumb in and I'm going to form a little dish shape in the center of that I'm going to grab myself uh, probably a little over a teaspoon of the ragu and we've got to have that beautiful mozzarella in there. So I'm gonna take a few chunks of mozzarella, push it in, take another piece of our rice just to use to plug it over. Now there are different ways to form the arancini. I've seen people doing it. I'll show you the way I do it and then show you some other ideas. 
So I've plugged the arancini over on that side. And what I tend to do is use these two fingers to form uh, the base of the arancini and I spin, I spin it around and so that it tapers to a point like that. Now some people they use it between the two hands and they sort of uh, spin it around like that. Whichever way you decide to, you're looking for a little tapered arancino like that. It would seem the weather here in Sicily doesn't want to play fair with us and let us make these arancinis. It's raining outside. Anyway, I finished. We've made seven arancini and we're about to coat these up and fry them. Now, some people here use a batter, like a egg batter with milk and flour. Uh, it's quite a loose batter and some people use just the egg and then roll it into the breadcrumbs. I found that the egg and breadcrumbs is a lighter batter and I prefer it. So I'm going with that for these ones. It really is quite simple. I've got a couple of eggs here. I'm just going to beat them up. I'm then going to take my arancino and I'm just going to roll it around in the egg, get a nice coating. Over here, I've got a tray of breadcrumbs. Pop the arancino in there and then we're going to lift those breadcrumbs over and give it a nice coating. And then we'll pop them back down on the plate. Now you will hear me say arancini and arancino. It's a little bit like oranges and orange. Arancini is plural and arancino is singular. Even the name arancini is kind of fun. It means little orange and you'll see when they fry up, they look like little oranges. Well, these ones have a point. Some of them are round, some of them are spherical in shape. And the reason they do that over here is because there are different fillings inside. Once you fill them, you won't know what's in unless you make different shapes. Now, the pointy ones are generally ragu. I've got my oil on behind me. I'm gonna fry these in a fairly deep oil. It's 175 Celsius, about 350 Fahrenheit. So I want to drop these in one at a time. I can probably get two of these in the pan at one time. So after they've been in there a few seconds, we're just gonna knock them over and just continue to fry them until they're beautiful golden brown or slightly orange. Now I'm gonna lift that out of there now. It's beautiful and that's the sort of coloring I'm looking for. We don't want super hot oil because we want to heat the arancini all the way through. And they look just great. Now look at those, they are absolutely gorgeous. Really pleased with the way these have come out. They're piping hot and I have to get some photographs but there's no way I'm waiting for these to cool down because warm arancini are so good. So let me get one of these now, open it up and give it a taste test. Now I think these were the first ones out, so they're not so, so hot. It's got a lovely crumb on there, it's not too thick. Now let's just break this open. And we've got that beautiful mozzarella cheese, lovely stringy cheese there. Whoa, I can't even get it to break. Oh, it doesn't matter how much I pull. I'm going in for the kill, having a try of this. I hope you'll get a chance to make these at home. Arancini are fantastic. And if you're wondering why they're so big, they are that big in Sicily. So if you want the real experience, make them big. Oh yeah. Super yummy Sicilian arancini. So we're gonna get on and enjoy some warm arancini. If you like the video, share the love, give this the thumbs up, and I will see you for another great recipe on Steve's Kitchen very shortly. And don't forget, subscribe and comments down below. I love to hear what you have to say. Be good.